Hi guys and welcome in the next video. First of all, I want to thank you to all of my subscribers, all of the people that support the channel. Thank you so much. Uh, I wouldn't be able to make what I do without you. And one more time, very, very, very big thank you. So today I wanted to continue the KUKA topic and I wanted to go with you through a linear and point-to-point -point motions. Ready? Let's get started. All right. So the topic I want to co cover today is basically probably uh, one of the basics that we need and that is how do we create and define PTP and linear motions and what is the difference between them. So let's start with the main difference. So the linear motions are made to move from point A to point B in a perfectly straight line. And there is one more property that they hold and that is they maintain the TCP speed that we will tell them to move at. So we will be always sure that we move from this point to this point in a straight line with a known TCP speed. However, the PTP motions behaves a little bit different. So if we have point A and point B, we actually don't know the path that the robot will take because the robot will take the quickest path possible. So when we talk about the PTP motion, we actually are talking about the joint speed, not actually a TCP speed. So the TCP speed might vary, but the joint motions matters to make the movement as quick as possible. So instead of moving in a straight line, the movement might look like something like this or something like this, or maybe something like this. It all depends how the robot is going to calculate that movement and what he will think will be the fastest way to get from point A to point B. So this is the two most important things about PTP and linear motions. What else is there? So there are two types of movement that we have in a KUKA and I talked about this briefly earlier. That is continuous motion and basically non-continuous motion. The continuous motion means that the robot is going to go from point A through point B to point C without stopping in point B. If we do a non-continuous mo motion, that means the robot will move from point A to point number three, but he will stop in the intermediate point. Why this is important? That's because when we use the uh, continuous motion, there is something called approximation distance. So with approximation distance, we're kind of telling the robot how much he should kind of like round the motion in order to get from point A to point C and skipping the point B in the process. And the approximation distance is actually the distance before reaching the point B in millimeters. So if we have point A here, let's say point B here and point C here, when we use a continuous motion on point B, the robot will calculate in millimeters when he will start, start rounding the motion before he gets to point B. So he will start the motion and then we'll say, okay, I want you to start rounding 100 millimeters and you want, I, we want you to approximate the distance 100 millimeters before the point B. So the robot will move, he gets to 100, he says, okay, now is a good time to do the rounding. So he will start doing the rounding and get to the point number C. This is important because that's how the distance is calculated, that's how you can define it and that's how you will know more or less what path the robot will take. It gets kind of trickier with PTP motions because we also have an approximation distance but the issue we're having is we don't actually know the robot motion because it's not a straight line, it's more of a curve. So it's kind of hard to calculate that distance. Also when you will see on the exercise, when we have a PTP motion, we can set the approximation distance to a thousand millimeters, but with the uh, linear motions, it can be only 300. So there is a lot of things to consider when using the continuous motion. One thing that's very important is you cannot use a distance, the approximation distance greater than half of the distance between two points. What, that is, what does it mean if this point and this point 
has 300 millimeters of uh, distance from here to here, that means that the maximum approximation distance is half of, the, of it, which is 150. If you use a higher value, let's say 300, the robot will not start to round your motion here because it's against the rules. You can use only half of the distance, which means even though you're going to put 300, the robot is going to start around here, around 150 millimeters. That's something also to keep in mind when you will program the robot and you're not quite sure, well, I put the maximum approximation distance, but the robot is actually not executing it. Why? Well, maybe that's the reason. Okay. And that's pretty much it from the introduction. I think it's time to get to the exercise. Welcome to the exercises. So I'm going to show you what is the difference between the PTP and linear motion. In order to do that, I already created a program for you called movements. So we're going to use that program in order to show those differences. So let's select the program. So we're going to hit select. And this is the program I made for you. So the program is quite simple. We have a home position. That's the position the robot is at. Then we have point one, point two, and point three. Point one is located somewhere here uh, at the conveyor. Point two is right here on the edge of the conveyor. And point three is at the other edge of the conveyor. So I'm going to show you how the robot will move when we're going to use a linear motion and how we're going to move, the robot is going to move when we use the PTP motion. And after that, I'm going to show you what is the difference between using a continuous motion and a non-continuous motion. Okay, so let's start. First, I want to show you the linear motion. And after that, we'll do the PTP. Before we start, how do we add a point to a KUKA robot? That is a good question. So in order to do that, you're going to select a line that you want the motion to be added, and you simply are going to click motion. And then you can choose what kind of point is this PTP, linear, circular, or spline motions. Right now, we're just talking about PTP and linear. So let's say I want to add a PTP point. The second thing is the point name and some of the parameters. That's tool data, base data, is it external TCP, and should we do a collision detection, yes or no. So that's the main difference between FANUC and KUKA. In here, our tool and base data is stored and attached to a point. So we don't need to worry about changing tool or base data in between the program because the point already know what tool and base data to use. Next field is nothing or continuous. So this will tell us uh, whether we should approximate our movement or not. When it's blank, that means do not approximate it, just stop at the point. When we use continuous, yes, use the approximation. The next thing is velocity in percentage or for a linear motion in meters per second. And the last one is our acceleration orientation and if that's a continuous motion we are going to have also approximation distance and we're going to show you how all of that works in a moment for now we can cancel the command because i don't want to add new point i want to show you how my current program works i'm going to change my point to be a stop point and let's run the program So we're going to move from home to our first position that's located here. Then we're going to continue to the second position that's at the end of the conveyor. And we're going to move to the last point that's located on the other side of the conveyor. And we, are, we were using a linear motions for that. That means the robot moved in a straight line. So let me show you one more time. As we run it, the robot is just simply going to follow a straight line from point to point. So because the first point was here, the second one is at the edge, we just follow a perfectly straight line along the conveyor, stop, and then perfectly straight line from this point to the other side of the conveyor. So this is how the linear motions behave. They will always go in a straight line from point A to point B. What is the difference between the linear motion and PTP? So let's change our point to a PTP. We're going to change the second point, PTP, command OK. And our last point also to PTP, 
command okay okay let's restart our program and let's run it once more to see how the robot will behave now so now we're going to go to the same points but look at the robot movement as he moves from point a to point b he is not maintaining a straight line as well from the point two to point number three that's because we use a ptp motion so for that motion the robot will calculate its movement based on the fastest way possible so he will move the joints depending on, on whatever is going to be the fastest and that's how the movement is going to happen so we no longer care about keeping the tcp in a perfectly straight line we either care about moving uh, the tcp from point a to point b the fastest way possible so that's the main difference moving in a linear we're going to maintain a tcp speed move in a perfectly straight line using ptp we're just going to move the tcp from point a to point b on an unknown path but uh, the fastest way possible okay so that was the difference between the ptp and the linear now what's the difference between continuous motion and non-continuous motion as you remember we have three points and we stopped at each of these points but in a normal production you most likely do not want to stop you just want to keep on running so we're going to change point number two from a stop motion to a continuous motion in order to do that i'm going to select point two click change change this to a continuous and click command ok okay from now on our point became a continuous point when we hit change and we go to our uh, p dot you can see that we have approximation distance in here and we can change it from zero to a thousand but i'm going to show you what does it mean uh, when we change our motions to a linear because it will be a little bit easier to see than with a ptp motion and that's mainly because we cannot really see the path of a ptp motion so it's kind of hard for you to see how the approximation will work okay so let's restart our program and let's run it again but with the second point being a continuous point so as we run it we're going to move to point one we're going to stop because it's not non a continuous motion and then as you can see we don't stop at point two but we go straight to point three and as you can see the robot didn't actually go to that point he actually made a little bit of approximation right here and let's go to a linear motion let's do the same and i'm going to show you how that approximation works so i'm going to change back all of my points to a linear points okay now one thing to mention when you go to this point and you look at the approximation distance you can maxim maximally go from 0 to 300 millimeters for the ptp points it was from 0 to 1000 so it is a big difference as well as we have something called orientation control uh, and that's to keep the orientation of the robot configuration but we're not going to talk about this right now uh, we're going to cover that later okay so i want to set the approximation distance to 80 millimeters command okay and why i did 80 because 80 millimeters is the distance from the edge of the conveyor which is our point two to the beginning of that roller let me quickly show you so as you can see this is more or less 80 millimeters now as we run our program the approximation distance works in a way that it will tell the robot where to start the approximation so because we said 80 that means when the robot passes the 80 millimeters mark from the point so from here to here we have 80 millimeters that means he will start approximating the movement and this will make the change of the path so the robot will move from here to here when it's going to be 80 millimeters before the point two it will start doing the approximation and then it will move to point three okay uh, let me show you how how that's done so let's reset our program and let's run it so i'm going to keep my mouse uh, on the 80 millimeters mark so you can see when the robot will start to do, do the approximation so as you can see 
he started to do approximation around here. That's because he passed the 80 millimeters and he said, okay, now it's time to do the approximation. So he passed the 80 millimeters and he make a now surrounding. Now, if we're going to change that to a higher value, let's say uh, 180. And we do command OK. 180 is somewhere around here. So the robot will start to approximate more or less around here. So you can see, you should see him doing the turn somewhere here. But let's see how that will happen. Okay, so we start our program and we're going to start our motion and more or less here the robot started to approximate so you can see that he was already off path let's say somewhere around here because we passed the 180 millimeter mark and we started to do the rounding one thing to mention about the approximation so as you can see the maximum distance is 300 however the real maximum distance cannot be the half of the distance between the points. It might sound a little bit confusing, let me explain. So if we have our point two here, our point one here, and let's say that's a 300 millimeters. Even though you will put the approximation distance of 300 millimeters, a robot will not start approximating here. He will start approximating at the half of the distance. So he will start approximating around 150 around the half the distance, so here. So regardless of the value that you will put here, he will always see, okay, is it less or more than the distance between two points? If it's going to be more than a distance from the two points, the robot will just approximate it at the half of the distance. If it's less than half the distance, everything is fine. And the robot will just use the approximation distance that you put in here. It's kind of hard to show you guys this for the PTP motions uh, because PTP motions are not a straight line. So it's kind of hard for you to measure the distance. Uh, but I think this gives you an idea how the approximation distance works. So that's pretty much the basics of adding a PTP motion and linear motions to your KUKA robots. That's how they work and that's how they behave. All right. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to comment, give it a like, subscribe, and like always, see you in the next video. Bye bye.